This video is about a technique that I use for building um, segmented pieces on the lathe. Now to understand why I would go to the trouble of building these one segment at a time on the lathe, which is way slower, you have to understand um, most folks will do uh, what we'll call a bricklay pattern, where each row is, is offset from the one beneath it, sort of like laying bricks, right? It's gonna obviously be a, a better joint and less likely to fail, but I think the bigger reason to do it is there's a lot of forgiveness here. I mean, getting these rings to align perfectly so that, that all four corners come together at every single joint is, is a monumental task. Even more so if the rings are, um, you know, 48 or, or, or more segments. Normally what you would do is you would, uh, you would put glue in all these joints like this, put a rubber band or a hose clamp or something like that around there and, and squeeze it tight. And, uh, and then when that completely dries, you run it through the drum sander and you stack it on the lathe. It works really well. But there will be minor imperfections in the, in the ring um, in terms of just it being absolutely perfectly circular. I mean, if you're awesome, <laughs> go for it. Yeah, I think I'm kind of, kind of good at this and I can't get... Um, here, let me show you. Um, this was an aborted... Uh, for a lot of reasons. There, this was a very, very much an experiment. It, it took me a while and, and it's sad that it didn't really produce anything of quality, but you can see um, I, this is 96 segments per ring and it's a very, very large ring. And when you, when you clamp these up, it's just about impossible to, to guarantee that it's perfectly circular, which is like okay if you're if you're not doing the brick lay or I'm sorry if you are doing brick lay it's kind of okay because the um, the out of roundness obviously is going to get corrected on the lathe and and that's going to result in in just a very minuscule um, offness uh, offness I guess that's a word right um, and you can see that here it absolutely impossible to fix because the rings weren't perfectly circular to begin with so when I started doing open segmented work, I got this, I got this index ring for this kind of work where uh, your segments are, are open and you leave that gap between and uh, it's very pretty. But I decided that I could use it to align um, a, call it a pixel uh, pattern where it was really, really important to me that that, that absolute precision let me demonstrate how I do this. When I designed this piece, I wanted it to be six inches in diameter. And so I cut my segments so that I would get that uh, exact diameter. I think it was a uh, 0.38. Yeah, 0.38 uh, inches gives me a six inch diameter ring. Now, of course, uh, I may or may not have cut these quite as accurately as I'd intended. So it's important to remeasure after you've cut them and then calculate the diameter of your ring from there. Because what you're gonna do, I've got this little nut here, uh, and that nut is very, very precisely placed. Uh, I got my radius basically, locked that in, and then used that to set this nut exactly where I need it to be. That's the most crucial part of this whole thing. Everything else goes on autopilot. You don't have to think if you get this uh, right. If you don't get that right, uh, you're gonna have a bad time. So uh, I just finished sanding this, uh, this ring. So in between each course, uh, you're gonna find uh, that you're gonna have to sand. And this brings up a very important point. That sanding isn't, isn't fun. Um, so you're basically taking a, a sanding board like this um, and uh, you kinda lodge it in there and hold it and away you go. And you'll do a lot of that if you're not careful with the way you milled your, your segment stock. So, you know, I've got three different species here. I've got uh, Cadillac, Maple, and Yellow Heart. And um, I have noticed that when I milled the Yellow Heart, I wasn't very, wasn't very careful. And some of them are just a, a fingernail catch different from the one next to it. And they've all got to be even in the end. So you're going to spend a lot of time sanding. So yeah, that's a, that's a tip. Be very, very careful about your milling so that you don't spend as much time as I do between rings. Okay, so I've got this table here and this is where I build. So let's go ahead and bring that back up. The banjo here provides me with uh, support for the table. You'll see how all that works. Let's go ahead and re-engage my index wheel. 
Okay, so uh, now we're going to take our next segment and place it on there. And then using that, that uh, banjo, uh, we're going to get that just perfect, right? Okay, so I've got my segments. By the way, I took the time to basically dry fit this entire vessel. Um, when you've got a, a pattern like this, I, I cannot tell you how excruciating it is to notice that you put something in the wrong place after the glue has dried. It, it's painful. Don't go through that pain. Take the time to do it this way. Preassemble your rings. I've got them taped up here, and then what I what I've done is I've gone through and marked an X straight down a line, so you can see. Right here, there's all my X's. And so it's just a whole bunch of checking and double checking and making sure that you're not screwing up. That's honestly, it's the biggest, um, it's the hardest thing about this work is, is not making some stupid mistake. Uh, can you tell that maybe I've made one or two stupid mistakes? So I'm gonna take the first one and I'm gonna line that up right there. I'm real happy with that. Actually, I'm going to tweak it just a little bit. Yes, happy. This first piece, we're going to put a little bit of tight bond, quick and thick. I'm going to press that on there. Now, I, I very often will use a, a, a stick or something to kind of push because my thumb's got glue on it, and I'm going to muddy up the, the front of that piece. Now, like I said a minute ago, we're going to sand this whole layer quite a bit, to be honest with you, afterwards. So that's not such a concern, but um, it is kind of annoying to stick to the piece that you're trying to stick. So, so I very often keep just a, a little piece of wood. Normally I'm not, I'm not doing this, right? But for the first piece, we're gonna let this dry entirely before we continue. And you'll see why in a minute. And since we're gonna do that, we have to be very careful to clean up the squeeze out. So this looks pretty tedious. It gets a lot better. It's only this first piece that we have to worry this much about because this is sort of, everything hinges off the placement of this. And so now that you've got it up, you know, you can, you can look at it a little closer, make sure you're really super happy with the alignment because if it's off, your whole ring is off. If it's on, your whole ring's gonna look awesome. And I'm really, really happy with that. So we're gonna walk away. I want that to dry completely. What I'm effectively doing here is using this, uh, this piece in conjunction with the index wheel uh, pin as a clamp against the table. And so uh, I spread a little bit of glue with my finger onto uh, both of those surfaces. And pop that guy in place and then I'll just move the index ring down. And, um, and from there, uh, give it a, a just a little bit of pressure and I'm, I'm pushing sort of this way to make sure that it's up against the nut as I as I push the that in there and that's it uh, now I can I can kind of take my finger and, and clean up the uh, the squeeze out and then I just grab the next piece same thing you sort of get into a rhythm here and uh, put that down I'll bring that up a little bit higher than the next index and then I'll back it back down, press it for one or two seconds, and again, reach for my next piece, and I'm just peeling them off that, that taped up mock-up that I had, uh, just in order. So, you know, you put a lot of these sort of processes in place to keep you from screwing up, because uh, honestly, that's, that's the hardest thing. When you do something this monotonous, I mean, usually I'm listening to audiobooks or podcasts or whatever and so I don't want to set up a process that requires my full-on attention I want to set up systems that uh, take all the thought out of it so that I can tune out and listen to my podcast that sort of thing so anyway I thought I'd share this because I haven't seen anybody else uh, building this way uh, doesn't mean there aren't a bunch of people doing it um, but I couldn't find anything, and so I thought it maybe it was worthwhile for me to put together a quick YouTube video. Uh, maybe I'll 
Maybe I'll do some more if this gets any kind of uh, reception or if, if you guys enjoy this sort of content. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll start posting here more. I don't know. No promises. So there we go. Thanks all.